This is Bazaar Morning Call. Broadcasting live from the CNBC TV 18 Motilal Oswal Studios in Mumbai. Hello and welcome to Bazaar Morning Call. We are coming to you live from the Motilal Oswal CNBC TV 18 studio. I'm Nashal Souza and joining me is Surbi as well as Sonia. Well, morning ladies. Uh, Big day today, right? RBI policy meet. Later this evening, you have uh, the CPI print coming in from the United States. I don't think it gets bigger than this, right? Oh, it doesn't. And, <laughs> and there's so many cues that the market has, right, as we uh, kick off trade. So I guess uh, the market also had this huge move on the upside in, uh, in late hours yesterday. Yeah. So that was a good thing. That was quite a dramatic move. Nigel, I see some green on the shirt, on the tie. Is it a, maybe, maybe, it's the mark for, of... <laughs> maybe it's for yesterday. Uh, it's, is that yesterday, it's last like hour? green on green, right? <laughs> so perhaps that's how the market's going to look at it. But you know, just to put a couple of cues on board as we kickstart trade, I mean, the SGX Nifty 4 now, or the GIF Nifty rather, is down almost 80 points. That's because the US markets were under a bit of pressure overnight, and that's on account of the inflation data that uh, you know is expected. Now, all eyes will be on the July CPI report. You have the PPI report that comes out tomorrow as well and ahead of that the Dow actually fell about 200 odd points uh, so you know there is a little bit of caution in the system as we wake up but our own markets have been up and running for the last many days now in fact since the 3rd of August the market has gained 250 points so the uptrend in this market is definitely intact now after you know in all of August actually we haven't seen a single buy figure from foreign investors but we saw that yesterday for the first time in August, FIIs came back, 650 crores was bought in the market yesterday. And uh, of course, for the RBI policy, it assumes importance for the day. But generally, uh, as you know, if you go by history, it's like a one hour, two hour event. And this time around as well, uh, it's expected to be leave rates unchanged. Of course, all eyes will be on the inflation commentary. So that will assume importance. But apart from that, I don't think the market is going to be too perturbed by what comes out of the RBI policy, considering that, you know, the momentum is pretty much intact, especially in spaces like pharma, IT, etc. Yeah, Sonia, I agree with that. I mean, for the long term or medium term, perhaps, I mean, these are things that are done in a day. But just for the day, I'm expecting this to be a little more important policy than what we usually go with. And I'll tell you why. You're absolutely right that on the headline, Line, uh, no rate change is expected, but it's going to be a lot more than the headline. And we see, you know, what Nigel and I were discussing on Closing Bell yesterday, that big move that we saw in equities with the bank nifty rallying, that was an equity market move. It was not a move that was resonating in the bond markets. The bond <laughs> markets didn't show you that kind of enthusiasm about some major dovish announcements coming in or the RBI governor, you know, that he'll ignore inflation. Bond yields actually inched higher. Yesterday, the 10-year ended at 7.17 versus 7.16, minor increase coming in. And the pressure on yields has been building even in the international markets. In fact, the swap markets are indicating that the RBI could talk a little bit more about the liquidity management side. And, you know, uh, can they, can they re really do anything else? Look at the way inflation has been accelerating. Uh, the print that we got in June was 4.8%, and that is when uh, CPI inflation stopped falling after four months, and it actually rose in June from 4.25 to 4.8. And this is when the tomato shock and the onion shock that hadn't even come in the system, uh, in, uh, vegetable prices were falling in June. This time around, that inflation data, CPI inflation for July, actually comes in post the policy. It's supposed to come in on the 14th of August. And the expectations are that it will shoot past the RBI comfort band of 6%. That's their upper limit of the tolerance band. Uh, and there are several factors. I mentioned vegetables. Let's not forget what crude oil prices are doing. Look at Brent. It's now touched $87 a barrel, uh, which is the high in you know, many, many months. It's the highest since April. NYMEX is at the high, highest since uh, uh, January. So uh, perhaps these are indicators and cues that the RBI will not be able to entirely ignore. How do they walk that tightrope between... Uh, you know, not ruffling the market too much, uh, whether it's going to be a hawkish pause. I mean, the, this kind of commentary will pretty much dominate over the next couple of hours. And I think the equity market will have to take note because the positioning yesterday was for a very dovish RBI. And let's see if some of that gets undone before the policies. Basically, on the bank nifty, at least, I'm expecting a bit of a roller coaster. Beyond the RBI as well, we have some interesting earnings to track, by the way. So just leaving that on the board as well. Hero Moto, Pidilite. Biocon, a lot of interesting stocks beyond the Nifty as well. Apollo Tires, some of the other tire makers have had great results this time. So let's see what Apollo does. Honeywell, Mazda, Doc. I mean, it's been the market's darling stock for the past so many months, right? Torrent Power and uh, even Sale. So 
Lots of action to keep us busy today, Nigel. Well, that's right. You know, the <laughs> market's verdict is clear to the RBI governor. Don't disappoint. We are going. We are pinning our, uh, you know, expectations on you. So just do what is expected. Status quo will do, and don't sound hawkish at all. Because the kind of move that you saw yesterday was preempting a positive surprise, maybe from the RBI governor, and maybe the print that comes later this evening as well. And yesterday was an outside day. What's an outside day? Well, when you have the high that is higher than the previous day, and you have a low. That was lower than the previous day. So yesterday was an outside day of sorts. What are the FIs doing in the FNO market? Well, on index futures, they unwound some long positions. Though they continue to remain net short with close around 80, 19,000 net short contracts, which means the short positioning is added on 55%. As I always say, I like a net short market. So let's uh, keep an eye on that front. The gross participation, though, on index futures is the lowest we have seen in nearly a month and a half. So the FIs are going into this event with very, very light positions in the FNO market, particularly on the index futures. Now, the Nifty options data, well, we have two strikes that have the highest open interest, and that contract will expire today. 19,500 put, 19,800 call. Both of them have open interest of more than a crore, which brings us to the levels. Now, we're at a very, very crucial juncture. And for me, today is a make or, uh, make or break day for the bulls. Why do I say that? Because we're very close to the 20 DMA. And the bears will put in a fight at around 17,650, 19,650 to around 19,700. So that's the crucial resistance mark. If we get past that mark, you know, then we're on our way back to challenge the 20,000 odd mark. On the downside, though, we have seen numerous times in the last few days that we go to around 19,450, and from there we see a bit of a bounce. So ideally, that should be a bit of a buy zone or the support zone that you're looking at. The Nifty Bank, well, yesterday you had two strikes that were very active. 44,500 put, 44,800 call, both of them fairly active. And the Nifty Bank is the one that's going to support levels and bouncing. So the 50 DMA was protected in yesterday's trading session. You have support at around 44,300. That's the recent low. That's why I'm highlighting that mark. But on the upside, 45,100, 45,200. When we're going there, we're seeing some bit of supply. So that's a crucial mark to watch on the upside. So on the Nifty Bank, 45,200. On uh, the Nifty itself, you want to get past that 19,700 mark. Three big events today. One is the RBI policy meet. Second is the CPI print that comes out from the United States. You don't want a negative surprise out there. And the FIs have turned around yesterday. But we understand that there was a couple of, uh, you know, buy flows that were expected yesterday. Nimish had told us in closing bell as well. So was it a flash in the pan or have they turned the corner? I'll be tracking that as well. Also, you know, just one point on the IT and pharma stocks. There's been a big rally over there. I mean, it's just 10 days of August so far. And Tech Mahindra is up already 10%. So mm. uh, that's those are two pockets that have come back in a big way. So given they call the volatility, maybe that will sustain. Okay, well, uh, we, we hold on to hope. The bulls hold on to hope. Let's kick it off then with the equity call of the morning. Vikash Jain of CLSA says, driven by the highest inflows in 10 quarters, FBI ownership of Indian equities rose to a five-quarter high. He says both FBIs and domestic mutual funds moved into small caps from mid caps, while domestic mutual funds also sold large caps. FBIs uh, and domestic MFs cut their relative weights in banks, led by similar views on HDFC Bank and Kotak Bank, and shifted into Reliance and IT, led by Infosys. He says discretionary stocks in particular, auto names like R uh, Maruti, M&M, were cut by both as they moved into staples, led by HUL. He says they took Aisha out of their India portfolio and they favor banks and energy now over IT and consumers. That's specific to the CLSA portfolio. Well, let's get you some money market calls. In Parul Mittal, say now, Standard Chartered Bank says that the USD INR has seen a broad uptrend on dollar strength with a risk off globally and gradual rise in oil prices. She expects the USD INR to trade in a range of 82.50 to 83.25 for the next week. With the US dollar, sales by uh, PSU banks helping sustain the pair below the $83. Uh, dollars. She says that Forex moves are likely to be led by the US CPI data, a key US dollar driver along with oil prices. On bonds, Parul says domestic yields saw upward pressure on food inflation worries and an inch up in oil prices amidst a drop in global rates. She expects the 10-year benchmark bond yield to trade in a range of 710 to seven and a quarter percent with the focus on the MPC today and the July CPI next week. She says their research team expects a status quo on rates and an unchanged stance with cautious guidance on food inflation. She adds their July CPI consensus range is wide at 6.4 or going up all the way to 6.8 percent. And she expects rates uh, sell off if a print is at the higher end of that range. She's adding that US CPI data will also provide cues in the near term.
Well, we've a lot of stock-specific action track for you. Get to that in just a bit in our special top 10 segment. But for the time being, we run you through the list. Startup Park, BI Industries, Max Financial, Z Entertainment, JB Chemicals. They are stocks that could be reacting to positive news flow. While on the flip side, you have IRCTC, Bata, Granule, Suzlon, and BSC. They are stocks that will be reacting to negative news flow.